because the performance of operator Connex has been worse than ever before. So far this year, the company has paid $10 million in fines for poor performance. Nick Etchells, what's the solution? Well, Mitch, uh, new trains would be a start, but unfortunately they don't arrive for another two years. In the short term, the government's found another solution. If the trains can't meet the timetables, the timetables will have to meet the trains. Unreliable, overloaded and, worst of all, late. But late trains is one problem the government can fix. Sort of. Some train services will be given longer to get from A to B. Some may be given longer, but we will also have additional services. So, rather than making trains run faster, authorities will change the timetables, allowing them to run slower. That simple change will mean fewer fines for Connex and fewer embarrassing headlines for the government. We wanted that, uh, those short-term measures so that the commuters feel that they're being listened to. We had a fast train fiasco in the country. Now I've got a slow train sellout for Melbourne. But is the relaxed timetable simply reducing lateness by changing the definition of late? Well, it's recognising that when you have more people travelling, it takes more time for people to get on and off trains. It's true there's been a 20% surge in train usage, but... The government has set a goal to virtually double patronage by 2020, so they shouldn't be surprised that it's happened. Since 2004, Connex has paid $62 million in fines for underperformance but it inherited a driver shortage, an old fleet and an undoubtedly dilapidated network. Connex does have a chequered past. It lost two English contracts over poor performance. The state government will decide later this year if it'll renew the Melbourne contract, but this time the company is confident. Our commitment to Melbourne is long-term. Nick Etchells, 7 News. Authorities.